If you ask a Canadian if they are tall enough to touch the high ceiling, the answer might be that at 6 foot 2, 3 meters is a bit of a stretch, even with a running start. Everywhere you go in Canada, you can find both metric and imperial units of measurement living side by side, and that is because Canada is metric-ish. As a former British colony, Canada inherited many of its institutions and systems from the United Kingdom, including the imperial system of measurement, and it had worked out fine for quite some time. But with the rising popularity of the metric system and its base 10 conversions, both Canada and the United States began the process of making the switch. The United States Congress issued the U.S. Metric Study in 1968, and Canada followed up in 1971 with the Metric Commission. The Canadian government then set a series of deadlines between 1975 and 1980 to achieve metrication. In April of 1975, Celsius replaced Fahrenheit. In September, rain and snow were measured in millimeters and centimeters, and the following April, barometric pressure went from millibar to kilopascals. In 1977, road signs became metric, and the measurement of fuels followed in 1979. Throughout this time, product labels were also switched over to metric. This of course was only in Canada, and the situation across the line in the United States was not the same. In 1975, the United States had passed the Metric Conversion Act with the intention to implement the metric system over the span of 10 years. However, no specific dates were set for conversion, and the population were either apathetic or resisted the proposed changes. In 1981, Ronald Reagan became president, and the following year, the United States abandoned their metrication project. By this time, Canadians were seven years into their metrication project, and at the point where metric had become the official unit system. In 1984, the Liberal government of Pierre Trudeau and John Turner was defeated by Brian Mulroney and the Progressive Conservative Party. Similarly to the United States, in 1985 the new government abolished the Metric Commission, and many of the fines and penalties for using the imperial system were removed. But instead of reverting the whole country back, a compromise was struck, allowing the imperial system to exist as long as it was alongside the metric measurement. Measurements could be metric or both, but not solely imperial. This 15-year history of the metrication project produced the system we have today, a country that officially uses metric but incorporates the imperial system into everyday life. I hope you enjoyed this video on the history of the metric and imperial systems in Canada. This is Tom from All About A.